إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thank him for allowing us to once again spend some good time together in the house of Allah inshallah ta'ala we continue reading from the explanation of this great hadith the hadith of Jibreel which is the second hadith from the for the hadith that are collected by Imam al nawawi in the well-known and famous and very very beneficial book, Al-Arba'in al nawawiyyah the 40 hadith. <coughs> this 40 hadith, as the ulama, they mentioned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given tawfiq to Imam al nawawi in choosing and selecting these narrations because they are they cover many topics in the deen of Islam, especially the basics that we should have knowledge of. And this book, alhamdulillah, has been explained by many ulama. From the time of Imam al-Nawawi himself, we explained it until our time. This book is a famous book, Al-Arba'in al that has been explained by many ulama it's taught in many masajid, in many seminars, alhamdulillah. Rather, this book for a hadith is memorized by many, alhamdulillah. It's good to have the book, and especially the explanation of this book. One of the beautiful explanations, and very easy and to the point, and very beneficial, is Al-Milha Rabbaniya. Al-Minha Al-Rabbaniya of the noble Sheikh Al-Alam Al-Doktor Salih bin Fawzan Al-Fawzan Hafidah Allah Ta'ala wa ghafara lahu wa li walidayhi wa al-Muslimina wa al-Muslimat Ameen We still Alhamdulillah reading from the explanation of the hadith number two the hadith of Jibreel on the authority of Umar radiallahu anhu we start, and this is the third session today, tonight. We start when the Shaykh is explaining the meaning that when you say, Ashhadu anna Muhammad al Rasulullah, I bear witness that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. The last point we, <coughs> we start at is that the Jews and the Christian, they knew he is a Messenger of Allah. They knew with their hearts because they had signs about him that he is truly a messenger of Allah but they deny that and they didn't want to say it with their tongue. The Shaykh says and this is it's not enough, this is a point to itself that it's not enough to just recognize him to be the messenger of Allah but the person should say it with his tongue as well. Why certain people, they know he was the messenger of Allah, they know he's the messenger of Allah because they read his biography. And they refuse to say, Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, for different reasons. The Shaykh mentioned some of them. Khawfan ala dunya. Because those who they cannot follow him now, they know they have to follow his teachings and that's going to change their lives. They have to change their life around. They don't want to do that. The Prophet ﷺ, he called to that which is good and forbid what is evil. Some people, they don't want to do that. They want to continue with their lives 
And that's why they're like, no, I can't. Yeah, he's a great man, no doubt he's a messenger, but nah. Some people, they said they're not ready because they don't want to give up the dunya that they are in. Some, their positions, they don't want to give up their position. Others out of arrogance, others out of envy and jealousy and the like. Now, when a person bear witness that he is the messenger of Allah in truth, now he has to follow him. It's not enough to just say, I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. But if a person say, I bear witness that Muhammad ibn Abdullah is the messenger of Allah. He is the one that Allah chosen for the, the message. Then he become a master upon that person who made that statement, he or she, to do what? To follow the Prophet wasallam. In everything the Prophet wasallam command with. If that person doesn't do so, then his testimony it will be of no benefit for him. Person say, yeah, he's the messenger of Allah, but he doesn't follow him. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Qasas, verse 50, فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَجِيبُوا لَكَ فَاعْلَمْ أَنَّمَا يَتَّبِعُونَ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ For those who they say that you are the messenger of Allah, but they don't comply with your commands. The commands of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu reach them and they don't pay attention to it and they ignore it. He says, he said, Allah said, you should know that they follow only their desires. And from this we have to pay attention, Ya Khwan. We have to strive. When a command comes from the Messenger of Allah, we take it seriously. If we keep hearing the Messenger Sallallahu said this, do this, don't do that, this is how you do it, and we continue doing it our way, that's a big problem. Now, if a person does not obey the Messenger of Allah وسلم, period, that's a disbeliever. But if he believes, he, he obey him in certain things and doesn't obey him in others, so that testimony is deficient now. When a person says, yes, I bear witness that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah وسلم, but He's cherry picking, you know, he just obey him in certain things and disobey him, disobey him in other things. So that testimony is not complete, it's deficient. How deficient is? The Sheikh says, you got to look at the thing that he is not disobeying, that he disobeying the, the, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi and beside the point, Yahwan, the Shaykh, he says, obeying the Messenger of Allah وسلم, is not an option, man. It's not an option. Allah didn't leave it for us whether we obey the Messenger of Allah وسلم, or not. It's not an option, it's an obligation. And the Shaykh mentioned a few ayats, only a few ayats. From them, number one, the ayah of Surah An Nisa, ayah 59. Qal Allah Ta'ala. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُوا الرَّسُولَ وَأُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ Allah is addressing the believers. All you who have believed, obey Allah and obey the Messenger وسلم, and those whom Allah has placed in authority amongst you. So this is a command from Allah that we should obey the Messenger وسلم. The other proof is the ayah 20 of Surah Al-Anfal. قال الله تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا أطيعوا الله ورسوله ولا تولوا عنه وأنتم تسمعون. Who you have believed, obey Allah and His Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. And don't turn away from Him while you know. Also in Surah Muhammad, verse 33, قال الله تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا أطيعوا الله وأطيعوا الرسول ولا تبطلوا أعمالكم. Once again Allah subhanahu wa taala addressing the believers. Who you have believed, obey Allah and obey. That's a فعل أمر. Verb of command. It's an order from Allah رب العالمين. And we Muslims, the orders of Allah are only good for us. We should know that Allah. Command us only which uh, that which is good for us. Here Allah is commanding us once again to obey His Messenger Also in Surah An-Nisa, verse number 80, قال الله تعالى 
من يطع الرسول فقد اطاع الله Whoever obeyed the messenger, وسلم, has indeed obeyed Allah. So obedience to the messenger وسلم, is obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also in Surah Ali Imran, verse 132, قال الله تعالى, وَأَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ Obey Allah and the messenger وسلم, so that you receive mercy. That's how you, be, you receive the mercy of Allah through obedience to Allah and obedience to His Messenger Sallallahu Likewise in Surah An-Nur verse 54 قال الله تعالى وَإِن تُطِيعُوهُ تَهْتَدُوا If you obey Him, meaning the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu then you will be rightly guided. So if someone keep disobeying the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu and he's like, now nah, he's guided, he's upon the right path, no, he's not. He's not. He's like someone who don't know where he's going. He keep opposing the instruction in GPS. Siri says, go north, he's going east. Siri go take a right, he keep going. Siri says, make you turn. He, he says, I don't care what she's talking about. That person, he's, he's lost. But he thinks as long as he's driving, he thinks he's doing right. But subhanAllah. We as a human, we don't do those things, right? Why we turn the GPS to begin with? Hmm? Why? So we don't get lost. So we don't get lost in the woods. So we don't get lost. Okay? Does anyone in his right mind say to somebody, look, look, we're going to put on Syria and we're, gonna, we're not going to listen to her. <laughs> All right? Then the, if you're riding with that person, the first question is what? If he said that to you, what is the question, the obvious question? If he says, look, We're going to turn on the GPS, but I'm not going to listen to the GPS. If she tell me go north, I'm going south. If she said make right, I'm making left. What is the first question come to your mind? Um, why would you do that? Ahsan, that's a very, very good, good question. Why would you do that? Another question. And why would you like to get lost? <laughs> And you're not the only one here. Yes. Thank you, yes. Why? What is the other question? Why you even turn it on? Why you didn't turn it on? Yes, another question. Why wouldn't you not listen instead of getting lost? Ahsan, why wouldn't you listen? This lady here, Siri, whatever, if she's a lady, I don't know. She's giving you directions, she's trying to help you. What is another question? Um, huh? Are you no. Why would you not listen to no. the GPS? Well, you just repeat that three times. Oh, yeah. No. How do you know where you're going? Ahsan, that's what it is. Why are you not listening to? Do you know where you're going? And how That's the question. That's the main question. How hold on, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, son, very good. That's what I'm talking about. If a person said to you, look, man, I'm going to put on, on, on a GPS, but I'm not going to listen to her. The first thing he said, so you know where you're going? If he said to you, yes, then you say, so why you turn the GPS to begin with? Why you want to play games? But if he says, I don't know, So you say, why you want to don't listen? That's weird. But see here, sometimes people, they turn on GPS, by the way, not only to know where they're going. Mm -hmm. Some people, they know where they're going, but they turn GPS for what? Second. For what? Second. They know where they're going. He's going to his house. He's going to work. But he turns on the GPS for what? ETA. What is it? ETA. You know what time you arrive. ETA. Or if there's an accident. Traffic. Traffic. Traffic, traffic, accidents, and, and also when you're going to be there, because they tell you the time. So that you reach the destination. So that you can do what? Reach the destination. Oh yeah, so you know where you are and also. Now, are you finished? so now, can someone say, somebody can say, look, I don't know where I'm going. I don't need this GPS, but I'm just putting it in there just in case if there is an accident. But can someone, someone say, I don't need this sunnah and stuff. I know how to get to Jannah. Can someone in his right, right mind make that statement? Yes. He says, I don't, I don't need Quran and sunnah, the way of the salaf. I don't need that. I know how to, make, to get to the Jannah. Yes. You're going to say something wrong with your brother. There's no, there's no way to the Jannah except through the Quran and the sunnah and the way of the salaf. There's no other way. 
Only yeah. when the horn blows. Ahsant. And also, because there is no way, nobody make it, been to the Jannah and came back. Does anybody make the Jannah and he's back now again? Never. No. Alhamdulillah. So it's very important over here, Ikhwan, to, to keep this. Those who are guided is true obedience to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it is a mess that you can find and you comply with the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You don't tamper. It is not permissible for us, period, to tamper with the Sunnah. Meaning, it is not permissible for us to add anything or to just eat it. Anything. Some people do that. Some people add stuff and some people eat it stuff. They're like, look, man, we live in America, man. It's 21st century now. This ahadi doesn't work for us. Alhamdulillah, does it work for you? They're from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? So it is not permissible, Yahwan, for us to worship Allah by anything except if we know that this is what the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu left for us. Otherwise, if we just do stuff, even if a person come and spend the whole night in the masjid, person spend the night in the masjid making some salawat and some dua, but the way he's making those salat and dua, the Prophet Sallallahu never made them, never tell us to do it that way. That person, he just came his own way of making salat, own way to making dua, then you will think, subhanAllah, I want to be like this person. This person is amazing. He spent the whole night in the masjid praying and making dua. No, you don't want to be like him. Because of this hadith right here. Prophet ﷺ, after this, and you can ask him, Shaykh. Prophet ﷺ, he used to say, وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَمُحْدَثَاتِ الْأُمُورِ فَإِنَّ كُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ دَلَالَةٍ Prophet ﷺ, he used to warn, he said, be aware of the newly invented matters, things that people will try to bring to the deen of Allah, they are not from it. For indeed, every newly invented matter is an innovation, even if other people say, whoa, look what he's doing, that's beautiful, subhanAllah. People are easy to be impressed. Prophet ﷺ said, every newly invented matter is an innovation and every innovation leads you astray. doesn't lead you to the path of Allah. Also in another hadith, as collected by Imam Muslim in his Sahih on the authority of Aisha radiallahu anha, the Prophet ﷺ says, مَنْ عَمِلَ عَمَلًا لَيْسَ عَلَيْهِ أَمْرُنَا فَهُوَ رَدْ أَيْ مَرْدُودٍ Anyone, and pay attention to this hadith, ya khwan. Prophet ﷺ says, anyone who does any action, any act of worship that is not in accordance to what we are upon will have it rejected. So you got to pay attention. That's why knowledge precedes statement and action. Before you do anything, learn. Before you celebrate, before you say this is good, this is no, this is right, you have to learn because this deen is complete. Now, Mahi. Uh, you mentioned something about uh, du'a. Ah. I mean, from my knowledge, I mean, you, can, you, you have the right to understand the du'a. I mean, there is no. I mean, it's it's better, like you know, to follow the uh, Rasul. Ah. But for du'a, you can say whatever you want. So. Whatever you want, huh? Whatever you want, I you mean, can du'a. make any du'a you want. Now that du'a has to be correct. Not any du'a you have to make. What are those who they make du'a against people? Huh? What about those who oppress others and make du'a? Du'a al Yeah. What are those who oppress the people? So you don't make the du'a, any du'a. So you have to be careful. And then you don't make du'a in any way. Some people, they sit down, they say, if you make this du'a 50 times, you get this. Tell them who says who. No, I'm not saying. I'm not trying to hear well, I'm not position. Mm. Yeah. But what I'm saying, I mean, no, no. We, I know what you're saying. You're saying that you, you don't see. Because speak to Allah the way, like you know, in a proper way. Listen, listen. Right. I understand what you're talking about, but that's not what I meant here. You can no, memorize. No. You can memorize the adhiyah of the Prophet Sallallahu That's the best thing you can do. If you don't, you can use your own way. You can say, Ya Rabbi, arhamni. No problem. But that's not what we're talking about. Oh, that's what I meant. Yeah. No, no, no. That's different. Because I may have a unique situation. That 
challenge facing so I can Yes, you can say you can ask Allah as long as you don't ask haram. And as long as you don't oppress somebody. But you can do it in your own wordings. Actually the ulama they said you can say it in your own language. Yeah, that's what I meant. You can say it in French, in English, in Urdu, Spanish, Chinese, Yoruba, uh, Surakulli, Swahili, doesn't matter. Yeah, that's what I mean. But what we mean is for somebody come from a new way of du'a, <laughs> some du'a that entails shirk, for example. Mm. Okay? Du'a that entails oppression to others. Okay? Or the way that that person, he's making the du'a that the Prophet ﷺ never taught us to make it that way. Or somebody who tell you if you, make, if you say this du'a 500 times, all oh, your sins are forgiven. Now we're going to say, wait a minute, sins forgiven? Says who? Why? Well, because la ilaha illallah is a good thing. Yes, we agree with you. Saying la ilaha illallah is a beautiful thing. But who told you if you say it 500 times or 1,000, you'll be the first one to go to Jannah, for example? That's the problem. <clears throat> now, So the point here is that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when you say, I bear witness that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you're saying, me and the innovations, we should never get along. I'm not going to innovate in the deen of Allah, and I'm going to do my best to stay away from innovations. And I'm going to con- 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 confine myself to worship Allah based on what the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam brought to us from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. That's what we say. Alright? When a person say, the same way we learn in the, in the statement, when a person say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, who can remind us what that means? Remember we studied this yesterday. When you say, I bear witness that, there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah alone. What does it mean? Tawheed. Ahsan, Tawheed. What does it mean? For the word in Arabic? No, no. What does it mean? When you say, because anybody can say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Many people, they say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. And they go against its meaning. No God deserves to be worshipped except Allah. Ahsan, that's the translation. But what does it mean? Mm-hmm. No partnership. Hmm? No of course, no partnership. What does it mean? You want intercessor and to mediate. Ah, son, now. Preserving Allah's rights upon his creation. What does it mean? You, all of you are very close to the answer. Very close. What you're saying is an explanation of the answer I'm looking for. When you say, I bear witness that there is only one true God, not two, not three. Somebody may say, listen, I know Allah is a true God, but Jesus is a true God too. Somebody may be on this. Is he all right? No. He, why is he not all right? Because, because, because you don't worship your God. Alright, so let me go back to my first That's question. Shit. What does it mean when you say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah? Man has a right to be worshipped. Right be worshipped. That's translation in English. Because somebody can say, uh, Personne n'a l'autorité. De, that's French. <laughs> An order. How do you say it in order? No, on Urdu, Sheikh, what do you say? That no one has the right to be worshipped except Allah in Urdu. There you go. Anybody knows another language in here? See, that's not what I'm looking for. Not just the translation. No. Nah. No, no. I'm not talking about the two pillars of La ilaha illallah. No. You're confirming that you are assuring yourself and you'll be a witness for yeah. you. So. No. That's good, but that's not what I'm looking for. <laughs> huh? Um, in other language, Arabi. Arabi, other language. Where's the other? Tawadda. Ashadu wa lehi 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 w
أحسنت أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله هذا عربي But what does it mean? Look أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله There is no deity worthy of worship except Allah But what does it mean to you? To me, me When I say hey, Look, I'm going to help you When you say I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah It means that You worship Allah only through what the messenger of Allah Brought to us from Allah No innovations, nothing But what does it mean when you say I bear witness That Allah is the only true God All the other gods over there They don't deserve To be worshipped What does it mean? Ahsan, that I worship Allah alone by what? No, you went to the other neighborhood now. <laughs> you just. It, <laughs> I know. By performing all acts of worship for who? Allah. That's what I'm looking for. When you say, I bear witness that there is no true God except Allah. You're saying that all, every single act of worship I'm going to perform is only for who? Allah. Allah alone. Is this is the case with some people? Is this is the case with certain people? You find some people, they call upon a dead person in the grave. Very wrong. Is that from Islam? Does Islam teach us these things? That's haram. But that same person, he prays in a masjid for Allah. He fasts Ramadan to get the rewards from Allah. Right or wrong? But when he comes to the dua, dua is an act of worship. Salat is an act of worship. Fasting is an act of worship. You find another person. He just pray asr with the people in the masjid and he go home and slaughter a sheep for who? For the jinn. For the jinn. He just have a, 10 good brothers from the masjid help him to move. And as soon as they want to start putting stuff from the truck to the house, like, wait, 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 brothers, wait, wait, what happened? Wait, we have to slaughter this goat, black goat. The brother, they think like, a couple of pizzas, this, this will be more. You don't have to slaughter a whole goat for us. It's okay, you know, some sandwiches. Like, that's not for you, that's for the gin. It's not for you, brother, that's for the gin. So that the jinn don't mess with us. That's a ship. But that person, he prayed in the masjid. He prayed asr. That salat, if you ask him for the jinn, he's like, A'udhu billah. Who pray for the jinn? It's for Allah. <laughs> when he fasted Ramadan, he said, listen, you fast for the jinn? He said, stop it, Allah. What's wrong with you, brother? My fasting is for Allah. What about the dabh? What about the dua? Why isn't it for Allah? Every single act of worship should be for who? For Allah alone, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, <clears throat> see, sometimes people, uh, we, we're from the people too, we do things sometimes without paying attention to what we do. Alhamdulillah. Hey, we don't. So that's why we, if you see someone, for example, doing something, calling upon Abdul Qadr al-Jailani, Hussein, Zainab, Kada, just tell them, Akhi, dua is an act of worship? Yes. So it for, should be only for Allah. Tell him, if you see someone fast the whole Ramadan, he told you that, that was for Abqadr Jailani. What you tell him? He's going, that was wrong, brother. You don't fast for, for, for Abdul Qadr Jailani. You fast for Allah. Your reward is worth. Tell him the same thing, brother. You don't make dua for Abqadr Jailani. Or, uh, or, or there is people that, you know, for example, that they said, instead of like, favor and you know the the blessing like to Allah they said oh because of him you know like a human uh, that's why I became like rich or something like that no that's a mistake too that's a big mistake I mean no. just like you know like, denying oh, Allah yeah, yeah. No, you don't say, that's very good you mentioned that. You don't say, because of him I got the job. Because of him, because of the doctor I'm okay now. I'm not dead. <laughs> no. Say because of Allah. Then. Then. Because that doctor, mashallah, has something to do, he helped you, but only by Allah's leave. If Allah didn't allow that doctor to help your mother or mine, <laughs> that doctor will be looking for somebody to help him himself. So we say, it's only because of Allah, then, not end. 
You don't say it's because of Allah and the doctor. It's because of Allah and the brother and you get the job. So no, say then. Best partnership. Aina. Shirk asghar. Asghar. Mind of shirk. Aina. Zakallah. Now, I'm dealing sometimes, subhanAllah, sometimes you find some bad habits that we pick up, especially some of us that grow up in some Muslim countries. You grow up picking up certain bad habits and statements that are not from Islam and they contradict Tawheed. And we have to pay attention to those, to those uh, statements so that we can correct our tongue, okay? Inshallah ta'ala. Or if we hear other people fall into those mistakes, we, we correct them, inshallah, because that's what we learn so we can, uh, you know, protect ourselves and help others, inshallah ta'ala, okay? Now, also now, a part of uh, saying that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, or believing to, he, to be that Muhammad ibn Abdullah وسلم, is the Messenger of Allah is that you have to accept everything he informs us with, inform us about, to be true. If the Prophet وسلم, said something about Allah, said something about Jannah, about the hellfire, about death, about the grave, the hadith is sound, this is it. Say yes, he said it. No room because some of the people who use their intellect now, like the Mu'tazila for example. And there are people, Mu'tazila, they start, they, they start in the time of the Tabi'een, but the ideology is still alive. Until this time, there are people who they reject the hadith because it didn't make sense to them. They like, that make no sense, man. Logically, that that's not even, can't even be proven. But he said to him, but who said this? The Messenger of Allah, right? Yes, yeah, still. They said, still. That's, that's, that's. Like, for example, they says the, the bliss of the grave and the punishment in the grave, they say, that's, that's not permissible. That's not possible. They said, that's, that's not possible. Why? They said, you can't see it. If you dig out anybody right now, you're not going to see no punishment or no nothing. <laughs> but now the issue is what? Them not adhering to the text of the Quran and the Sunnah. They, they look at the statements of the Prophet ﷺ like the statements of any ordinary man. This is not an ordinary man. He was a man, but he was what? He's the messenger of Allah. The last messenger. What Allah said about him? وَمَا يَنْتِقُوهُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحِينْ يُوحَىٰ Allah tells us about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu He does not speak out of his desires. It's all revelation, as the Shaykh is going to mention that later, later on. Alright? So, anything the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi inform us? Yes, you may not understand everything. You understand? Sometimes the hadith, you hear it and you're like, whoa, subhanAllah, this hadith is amazing. Oh no, how, how can it be? If the hadith is sound, accept it. Then go seek help from the ulama to break it down for you. But never ever reject the hadith just because it doesn't make sense to your intellect. That's not good. That's not good. Likewise, the things that the Prophet Sallallahu said, stay away from. Ahakada barakallahu fi. If a person now, he acts in accordance to what the Prophet ﷺ said, but he doesn't believe in him, that's who? Who is that? That's a hypocrite, a munaf. <clears throat> Look at the hypocrites in the time of the Prophet ﷺ. What they used to do? The hypocrites that Allah exposed them. What they used to do with the Prophet ﷺ? They used to what? Pray. No, they used to pray in the masjid. They used to fast. They used to make hajj, jihad even. They used to put their lives, <laughs> their lives in danger. But they never believed him with their heart that he is the messenger of Allah Sallallahu They never believed in whatever he says about the unseen that Allah informed him and taught him. Anything that the Prophet Sallallahu said, they used to make fun of and make mockery of or, or try to cast doubt in the minds of others about it. But there is nothing to be rejected from what the Prophet ﷺ said, from his commands and his prohibitions. 
Why? Because this is a messenger of Allah, sent by Allah to deliver the message of Allah. And he never speaks out of his desires. As Allah says, وَمَا يَنْتِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْنُ يُوحَىٰ Surah Al-Najm, verse 3 and 4. The Allah tells us about the Prophet ﷺ, he does not speak from his desires. It's all revelation. When he comes to the deen of Allah, Prophet ﷺ doesn't just say it from his desires or from his opinions. It's a revelation. That's why the ulama, he says, or sunnah is a revelation as well. Because the Prophet ﷺ doesn't say things from himself. It is, he is inspired, he is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is revealed to him. It's just the difference between the Quran and the Sunnah when he comes to the text, that the Quran, all of it is a speech, speech of Allah. It's the speech of Allah, the Quran, all of it. Whereas the Sunnah is the speech of the Prophet ﷺ, but by revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah revealed to him what to say, and the Prophet ﷺ said it. <clears throat> Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the verse number 7 in Surah Al-Hashr, وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ Allah is the one who tells us a command. Whatever the Messenger of Allah give you, take it. Act upon it. Whatever He forbid you from, stay away from it. And of course, we're not in, uh, people are not all on the same level when it comes to adhering to the commands of Allah and staying away from the prohibition. May Allah have mercy on us. Many of the commands come to us and we just like look at them like, mm, that's not for me. We disobey Allah, we wrong ourselves. May Allah have mercy on us. May Allah forgive us and protect us and aid us so that we can apply these commands. Aina, because they only commands good for us, Ikhwan. Aina. So, Obedience to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu is an obligation once again, it's not an option. To follow him and to take him as the best example, this is, this is the, the right way to be done. And with that, you should leave off innovations, all of it. There is no good innovation in Islam. Let no one tell you there is a good innovation, while the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, every innovation leads you astray and leads in the hellfire. So who knows more about innovation? Who knows more what's good for us and what's not? The Prophet ﷺ or somebody else who came 700 after, after him? Or a thousand or more or less? So there is no good innovations when it comes to Islam. This mic, you can say, is a good innovation. This recording device, you can say, is a good innovation. The light, you can say, is a good innovation. The pen and with the ink and all that, you can say it's a good innovation. The computers, the trains, the planes, those are good innovations. Because every term has the linguistic meaning. So linguistically, what's an innovation mean? When anything takes place, they have no precedent, no example before. Like the iPhone, is it an innovation or not? They use it, even the cup bar, they say, right or wrong. They say, we have to speed up our innovations. Somebody say, Audhu Billah, iPhone is haram. Why is iPhone is haram, brother? They say it's an innovation. Yes, the iPhone is what? What did they just say about the iPhone? It's an innovation, right? But the Android is okay, it's an innovation too. It is an innovation. What does it mean? Meaning that this is something. 50 years ago, there is no such thing as an iPhone, right? This is not even 50, maybe 30 years ago, right? Not even 20, maybe. Maybe even 20 or 15 or whatever. iPhone came like what? In 2000 something? Let's say 20. 2009. Whatever, you know that better than me. Anyway, innovation when it comes linguistically, meaning something that didn't have a, an example before. That's an innovation. And it could be good and it could be bad. Look, this mic is a good innovation because it's used for Quran, for Salat, for khutbah, for classes. Another mic 
He's in a club right now, Al-Iyad Billah. He was for dancing and disco and I don't know, La Bamba and whatever. You see? But this, alhamdulillah, this is a good innovation because it's used. It depends what you use it for. But when it comes to Islam, there is no such thing a good innovation. Because no one has the right to introduce anything to the deen of Allah and try to sell it to the people. Come on, it's a good thing, man. Hey, nothing wrong. We just sit in the masjid and, 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 and doing it this way. He said, wait a minute. This is the deen of Allah and deen of Allah is complete. And there is no room for addition. Okay? You just can't. Add nothing to the deen of Allah. Learn and act upon it. فَالْخَيْرُ كُلُّهُ فِي مَا جَاءَ بِهِ الرَّسُولُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ The good, all good, is in what the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم left for us. Anything that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم did not command us with, didn't tell us it is evil, there is no good in it. Even if the person may intend by it good, So this is very important. This has nothing to do with intentions. Some people may have a good intention. They want to do this to please Allah, but they don't know how to do it right. They say, they tell you, they say, okay, this is a, yeah, this is not from the deen, but this is a good thing, man. This is good. We're not drinking. They tell you, we're not drinking in here, man. We're, we're just here doing something that is good in the masjid. We're not in a bar. We're not stealing. But you tell them, but this way that you're doing it, is it something that the Prophet ﷺ did it? No. Sahaba know about it? No. So why you want to do something that the Prophet ﷺ never heard of? So these are from the innovations that the person should stay away from because the Prophet ﷺ, he said that all innovations are rejected, they are evil, and there is no good in them. So if a person thinks that No, no, this is a good thing and you're going to get you closer to Allah. That's wrong. That innovation gets the person nothing but further away from Allah. Like celebrating like Eid al-Mawr. Aina. Like, exactly. That's, that's, that's a famous innovation. Famous innovation. People, they celebrate the, the Mawr. Why? They say, well, this is a good thing because this is our prophet. This is the best of mankind. You know, we celebrate and we, we read some Qur'an, we read some seerah. There's nothing wrong with that. You tell them, look, as for you saying he's the greatest of the creation, the best of the creation, yes, you're right. As you're saying, reading Qur'an or reading his seerah, this is beautiful. <coughs> But don't do it, you have the whole year. Why you wait until the 12th of Rabi al -Awwal? Why? Did the Prophet ﷺ choose that day? Did the Prophet celebrate his birthday? Did any one of the companions celebrate his birthday? No. Did the Prophet Sallallahu say, look, I'm not going to celebrate my birthday, but you can. It's okay, you can. No, he didn't. So therefore, and you know who introduced the, 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 the Bid'ah of Mawlid? You know that? Fatimi. It's not Abu Hanifa. Rahimahullah. It's not Abu Hanifa. It's not Shafi'i. It's not Malik. It's not... Ahmed bin Hanbal, the first four centuries. The first four centuries, the Muslim, they never heard of such thing. That's why you cannot find this Mawlid mentioned in the books of the ulama of the past for the first four centuries. Because there was no such, such thing. It was introduced by the Shia al Fatimi huh? in Egypt. So we're going to take the, our deen from the Shia? We can't do that, man. We just can't. Unfortunately, it's like in so many uh, Muslim countries, yeah. it's a national holiday. Exactly. That's the Shaykh al-Albani, rahimahullah ta'ala, amongst many of the ulama, they says, why, if you wonder why this innovation, the innovation, they bad, why they are so famous, and because they are, for many reasons, number one, some of these innovations are sponsored by government. Now you're going to try to tell, let's say, a government where the Mawlid of the Prophet is celebrated, and you're here, you're in America, you're in Florida, and you call your mom, your auntie, your grandparents, whatever, cousin, hey, don't celebrate, that's not good. He's going to say, says who? We'll tell you. They're like, from Florida, you're telling us what's right? The whole government, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a, hey, the whole government are celebrating. You know how many ulama in this country? Hmm? Actually, they, they just gave a khutbah on Friday. F1. 
Actually, they just gave a khutbah on Friday in all masajid talking about Mawlid and he's a good and celebration. You see how it is? Shaitan is very tricky. The haq is not about this government sponsoring or this, it's about qala Allah, qala Rasul Sallallahu That's what's going to save us at the end of the day, okay? <clears throat> now, so the Shaykh says, so this is some of the meanings of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu So he said, now, somebody say La ilaha illallah, but he worship other than Allah. <laughs> you understand that? Who can explain? Somebody say La ilaha illallah, but he worship other than Allah. Give me an example. Now. They go to awliya. Ahsan. They say La ilaha illallah, but they still devote one of acts or some few acts of worship for other than Allah. Those are mushrikeen or illibullah. They say La ilaha illallah. And they pray and make hajj fast. But then they slaughter for other than Allah. They make tawaf around the grave. They call upon a dead person in a grave. Or they go to the magician and believe in them. That's kufr and disbelief. So they say La ilaha illallah, but they contradict it. They don't contradict. Aina. That's why Shaykh al-Albani, rahmatullahi said, subhanAllah, it's amazing. Many Muslims these days, he says, they say la ilaha illallah, but they go against its meanings. Because they don't know, they just say it by affiliation. They just grow up in some Muslim country saying la ilaha illallah. They never taught, they never sit in the class to know what does it mean. He said, it's, it's, it's said that the kuffar of Quraysh, the pagan of Quraysh, they know the meaning of La ilaha illallah more than many Muslims these days who pray. That's why the pagans of Quraysh refuse to say La ilaha illallah. You know why they refuse to say La ilaha illallah? Because they know what he means. They know exactly that the Prophet is telling them accept Allah alone and avoid all of these false gods. They said no. Yeah, we, we were, because then they worshipped Allah too. They believed in Allah. You know that, right? Yeah. You know that the, big, the pagans of Quraysh, they believed in Allah or not? They did. Yes, they believed in Allah. And they called upon Allah. Allah tells us in the Quran, those pagans of Quraysh, they have so many idols, but if they are in the ocean, and the water, the tide is high, and they see, man, they're in trouble, who they call upon? They're sincere, they call only a, none of them say Hubal. None of them call upon no statue. They, in the times of difficulty, the pagans of Quraysh, they call upon Allah because they know only Allah can help them. But then when Allah put them to safety, then they turn back to their gods. Now you find the mushrikeen of this, this era. Sheikh al-Albani says, they mushrikeen in times of ease and times of difficulty. You will find them in times of difficulty, what they say? Ya Jailani! Ya Hussein! They worse than the, pag- the pagans of Quraysh. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al Yes, yeah, ignore. That's why we have to learn and do our best to try to help whoever we can. You find some people in the Hajj. Hajj. He's making Hajj and he's calling upon some, some men instead of Allah. In Hajj. And, uh, one student of knowledge told me a story. He says one of his cousins, he was driving in the a, in a, in a, in a desert of one of, the, one of the countries of the Khalij, of the Gulf. Desert, just the desert. And then he... Then he... As he passed by this bus, flipped, and people are I mean, laying down, and then as he passed them, he stopped. And he got out of his car to see what he can do. He said he was, he was amazed. As soon as, as soon as he got out of the car, people ran into him and said, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein. And his name is Hussein. He's like, how do you know my name? Wow, they know me? He said he felt so bad. He's like, whoa, these people know me and they are in trouble. Alhamdulillah, I stopped. Ya Hussein, ya Hussein. <laughs> then he's like, you guys know me. 
They're like, who are you? My name Hussein. They say, yeah, Hussein. They call him Hussein, the grandson of the Prophet. And he think they were calling his name Hussein. They just call him upon Hussein. So Allah salam wa That's why it's very important for us, Yahwan. So it's important for us to know the meanings of La ilaha illallah, the meaning of the Muhammad. Rasulullah but we have what's more important than that is we have to put it in practice when you say la ilaha illallah meaning that you say the only true God that deserves to be worshipped is Allah meaning that every single act of worship is only for him I'm not going to like cherry pick and some of act of worship for Allah some act of worship for the jinn some for dead people in the grave some for the Kaaba some for I don't know who no, it doesn't work like that he got to be all for Allah Likewise, when we say, I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah Sallallahu I am saying that I will follow only the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi when he comes to the deen of Allah. If anybody is telling me what the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi was upon, I'm going to follow that person because in reality I'm following who? The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But if somebody is going to call me to something else that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never ever heard of, never left for us, I'm going to leave it alone. Because I'm saying, I bear witness that Muhammad alone is the Messenger of Allah. Not Muhammad and somebody else. Only I'm saying only. He's the only Messenger. So why I'm going to take something else from somebody that's not even proven whether the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said it or not? Inshallah ta'ala. We're going to stop here because this, the next section is going to be about, about the Salat. Okay, we're going to leave that for tomorrow after Fajr, okay? Because the schedule tomorrow is three sessions. One right after Fajr, it's going to start with the Salat. Then the other one after Asr. Then the other one after Maulid. Try your best, inshallah, to attend this session. It's very important, inshallah ta'ala. And also, make me happy to see your beautiful faces. Anyway, okay? We have five minutes. If he wants to share with me something from the class, inshallah ta'ala, something you want me to repeat, please do so, inshallah ta'ala. Now. There's another concept that we talked about before, that the Prophet are helped and make munajat. Ahsan. And that's wrong too. You don't call upon the Prophet sallallahu that's shirk. You don't say, Madad, Madad, Ya Rasulullah. Oh, Muhammad, help me cure my mother. That's shit. Even he's the best of the creation, but he cannot help you like that. Prophet Muhammad Sassam does not cure anybody. Prophet Muhammad Sassam does not give anybody children. Doesn't. But how are you going like, to benefit from the Prophet Muhammad Sassam? By learning his sunnah and put it in our lives. Okay? Now. Hold on. <clears throat> so many Muslim countries, I mean, I'm talking like, you know, people that go back home. No. But there is some message and it has a grave. No. Like, you know, the way, you know, it's like no. Masjid, no. No. And there is a grave in the Masjid. Exactly. That's not permissible. And so, the ulama, they say it's not permissible to pray in the Masjid like that. So you just like, oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. you don't, because that's the Sophia. They put their sheikh or whatever and they bury him in the masjid. Why? They shouldn't. If he was a good man, how do you know? If somebody died and he was a good sheikh, bury him with the Muslims. And you go visit him and make dua for him. Anyone who died, now he needs dua. He can help nobody else. All right? So the, the, we don't pray, we don't pray in the graveyard, we don't pray, we don't supposed to have a, a grave in the masjid. If anybody has it, they're supposed to do something about that. Whether they remove the grave or they remove the masjid somewhere else or something like that. But if you go to an area like that and there is other masjid, you go pray in the other masjid. Alhamdulillah, don't pray in that masjid. Now. So, uh, <coughs> Yeah. No. Can we make dua? Let's say, for example, someone's going to surgery, and the people who are going to perform the surgery are not Muslim. Can we ask Allah to guide their hands to make the surgery successful? Like to guide them 
Just make dua for the believers. Say, oh Allah, make this, make this uh, operation beneficial for him. Okay? Oh Allah, make this beneficial for him, alhamdulillah, and easy for him, and, and give him what's good for him, okay? Or her. Now. Well, it's true knowledge. If a person, for example, we are that person. Sometimes we, 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 mashallah, we're good at certain commands of the Messenger of Allah, we do it, mashallah. But then there is other command that Allah must have. We're very poor when it comes to <laughs> applying. Then a person should at least look. A part of solving a problem, you have to acknowledge that there is a problem. Very wrong. If a person just keep going and he didn't even notice the problem, he's not going to fix it. So we have to say, subhanAllah, yeah, alhamdulillah, there are certain things, alhamdulillah, I'm doing right, but there is a whole lot of things that I'm struggling and trying to <coughs> try to, 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 to turn to Allah, dua, asking Allah for, for protection, for piety, for righteousness, for guidance, because it's only from Allah SWT, make a lot of istighfar, learn knowledge. If I am deficient in any matter, I want to learn more about it. I want to hear more talks about it. So I can get strong, inshallah. Same way, some people, when they, they go lift weights, and you find, subhanAllah, they have like the upper body is strong, but then they forget the lower body, you see? And then somebody tells them, because you guys were not alternating, you were not doing it right. You just focus on the upper body, and look at you now. You know, you to, you're going to keep doing. That's why the, the good coach, he tell you a little bit of everything, you know. Wallahu huh? I'm not even a fitness or fitness or whatever. You can call it fitness coach or none of that, okay? Zakumullah khair, barakallahu feekum, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala muhammad, ala alihi, sahbihi wa sallam 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 w